Hey amigos, welcome back. And yes, in this video we will see 20 awesome cricket facts and some unbeaten records in the cricket. But before getting into this video, if you haven't watched my previous videos yet, please do watch it. Click the i button up here to watch my videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Now without any late, let's get started. We all remember the time when the legends of Indian cricket scored their magic figures of 200 runs. Little did we know that Sunil Gavaskar, Saru Ganguly and VVS Lakshman had something in common. While scoring their debut double centuries, all of them scored their first 200 while playing their 99th test match. An amazing coincidence, right? Have you ever wondered what is it like to play a sport for the first time and become a master of the game? Well, Australian cricketer Charles Bannerman did exactly that. He was the first ever cricketer to play the new ball, score the first ever run. Oh, this was simply extraordinary. He was the first ever batsman to score the century in the history of Test cricket. Wondering which year that was? Well, it was March of 1877. Mahendra Singh Dhoni, who doesn't know this player? Even if you knew him very well, I'm pretty sure that you don't know the secret behind his jersey number 7. Well, here goes. On his debut against Bangladesh, he came out to bat at number 7. Well, now you know that little secret. We all were struck by Shai Dafri this fastest century. He did that in only 37 balls. But did you know this? The bat he used for the innings was Sachin's. Yeah, pretty much shocking that the century he scored, isn't it? Of all the storms in the world, there are few which we immensely like and are pleased to watch. Well, I'm talking about Gale Storm. He holds a very peculiar record of smashing the ball out for a six in the very first delivery of the test match of Soha Ghazi in Maipur 2012. I'll tell you what, Bangladesh players weren't very pleased with this. I can tell that much. Believe it or not, Saif Ali Khan's grandfather was a cricketer. Yes, his name was Iftikhar Ali Khan Pataudi. Also, he is the only player who had played cricket for the both India and England in the tests. We all loved it when young Yuvraj Singh sent Stuart Broad packing for six sixes and over in the 2007 World Cup, beating the record of the most runs ever possible in an ideal over. Well, he wasn't the only Indian to do that. Ravi Shastri, while playing for Bombay against Baroda, did exactly the same. 36 runs in 6 balls. Sachin has been the heart and soul of the cricket in India. Millions of people stopped doing whatever it was they were doing to watch him play for India. Now, there was a time when Sachin played for a team other than India. Don't worry. It was a practice match between India and Pakistan at Brabant Stadium in 1987. He came out as a substitute fielder for Pakistan. Must have broke a few hearts back then. Ever heard of an all-rounder? I bet you have. But I seriously doubt if you have ever heard of this. Well, Sir Vivian Richards, the famous West Indian batsman, also played football. In fact, he is the only player to have played World Cups for two different sports. He represented Antigua in the 1974 Football World Cup and also represented West Indies in the 1975 and the 1979 World Cups. An amazing all-rounder indeed. One of the most feared by the batsman and the most rewarding for a baller. 
the googly. It was invented by the Bernard Bosinkat when he first bowled it on 20 July 1900. He tricked the batsman with the leg spinning action of the ball but then made it break from the off. Can't believe the googly is 120 years old, can you? It is customary for players to stand for the national anthem before any game begins. But Ireland-born England player Owen Morgan has admitted that he never actually sung the national anthem. When asked about it, he evaded the question citing personal reasons. Did you know that cricket was part of the Olympics? Two Olympics to be precise, first in 1896 which was held in Athens, Greece and then again in 1900 in Paris, France. Only two teams took part in those Olympics games though, which were France and Great Britain. India is the only nation in the world to win a cup in every single format of a sport. Yeah, you guessed it right. 60 over format in 1983, 20 over format in 2007, and 50 over format in 2011. India has backed them all. All other games undergo changes during their histories. But cricket is the only sport where the rule for the pitch hasn't changed. It was the same in the beginning as it is now. 22 yards. The first ever cricket match officially held was played by United States of America against Canada. It was held in St. George's Club in Bloomingdale Park, New York in 1844. Cricketers need a lot of fitness. This sport doesn't encourage sportsmen who aren't fit. But did you know that Wilfred Roach of England played till he was 52? Must have been an excellent player. I wish I watched him play. A made in over has been a boon for every bowler who had ever been out there. And it is a dream for every bowler yet to be out there. Talk about the consecutive ones. Well. Bapu Nathkarni, an Indian bowler, holds the record for the most consecutive made in overs. He backs this record with 21 consecutive made in overs against England in 1964. Imagine facing a thousand fours? Well, not fours exactly, but something very similar. Shivnaren Chandapal holds the record of facing 1051 balls in the test match against India in 2002. He remained unbeaten even at the end of 4th innings. Take a bow, Shiv. Saw Don Bradman. What a fine player. He was inspiration to many. Well, here is an interesting thing about him. On the first ever test cricket match played by the Indians, the Indian skipper Lala Amarnath holds the record of bowling the only ball for which Sir Don Bradman was given out after a hit wicket. Don was never given out in his fashion, never before, never after. Ever seen a ball go as long as a mile when it went for a six? What do you think about a ball going as far as 500 miles for a six? Well, you shouldn't be surprised because the longest six was 556 miles. Impossible? Very much possible. Because it really happened. Jimmy Sinclair, the batsman who hit this epic six, didn't have the slightest clue. He hit the ball which landed on a train on its way to Port Elizabeth. The ball was recovered from there. And that's a wrap guys. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more interesting updates. Thank you.